Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part five of our automation framework design and development video series. So in this part, we are going to discuss about POM, which is nothing but page object models. So before starting this video, I would request you to watch part four, since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Let's get started. Page object model. As discussed in part three, POM is mainly used to reduce the number of duplicate codes, which does same operation and it maintains the object in a separate class files it also improves the readability of your code since you store all the objects in a separate class files and also their identification attributes will be set for the same properties or the same object POM will also have the handle for each page using its instances and POM also establishes the relationship between each pages directly in the core so that performing an operation one page will return another page which can be maintained in POM so we can also maintain the relationship between each page we'll talk about the relationships and the way POM can be organized in greater details when we start working with it but as of now just take this as a point and also in order to maintain the support for POM pattern Web drivers support a class library called Page Factory. So Page Factory does all the magic for your POM. Setting up project ready for POM. So in this video, we're going to create our first POM class and also create an object for the page UI. And we're going to initialize the objects using Page Factory. So let's jump into our Eclipse. I'm going to create a new Java project and I'm going to name this as POM. And I'm going to keep all this rest aside. And I'm going to add the external jar files. So my external jar files is available right here. So I'm adding my Selenium client and Selenium server here. Note that both of them should be of same version. So note that there is no separate jar file available for POM. Actually, POM is incorporated along with the Selenium itself, right? And I'm going to attach the source for my Selenium client. So this is available in the external source okay that's it and hit finish so this will create me a project with adding all the references of my library files and then i'm going to create a new class file so i'm going to give a package name for this as of now i'm going to give this as org.pom and this is going to be my google search test i'm going to create a public static white main method and hit finish so this will create me a class file which has a main method that's fine but as i told already in the slide using page object model we can maintain our objects in a separate class files so i'm going to create a separate class file for my pom so let's go ahead and add a class file and this class file will have all my objects of my page so I'm going to name this as Google Homepage Objects and hit finish. Don't try to add a main method because one project can have only one main method in it. So what I'm going to do here, all I'm going to do here is just to add some of the objects for my Google page so that you can access that particular object in your test method right here. So as of now, there is no test method. There is only main method. We'll talk about creating a test method using testng in upcoming video series. So as of now, we can call directly from our main method itself. Okay. So in order for our page objects to be created, I'm going to create a public web element. So as we know in Java, everything is web element. So I'm going to add a web element and I'm going to say txt search. So our Google page will have a search text box. So I'm going to add this txt search and let's add the search property for this text box. In order for that to be done, just hit control one and this will bring you the references to be add for class file. I'm sorry, uh, since I'm a C sharp guy, I always say references. I'm saying the packages for this class file. So just hit import all right and then we're going to use some attributes which search for this particular control so in order for that to be done 
first we need to identify what is the name of the search text box what is the name or the id of the search text box so in order for that i'm going to open a firefox and i'm going to navigate to google website all right and this is the search text box so i'm going to right click this and go to inspect element with firebug and you know this firebug is the very famous tool which can be used for identifying an object in the page and as you can see here the name of this text box is q or the id is uh, G -Q gbqfq so i'm going to use the name since it's very small so i'm going to add a attribute called find by the eclipse is more intelligent enough add the references automatically and i'm going to say find by of control space it will show you what are the types which can which can be added for this particular attribute so i'm saying i'm going to use the name so name is equal to q that was the name that's it so as you can see i have assigned the identification property for my text search box Similarly, I'm going to use public web element of btn search. All right, and let's say I'm going to search for selenium. So once I search for the selenium, the Google search button disappears, but in turn it brings me this button. So let's search for this button's name, and this button's name is btn g. So I'm going to add a find by of name is equal to btng. That's it. So these are the two properties which I have added for my page object. And then I need to initialize these two objects so that the page factory will know that these are the two objects which needs to be searched for this particular web driver and then we have to perform some operation for these objects in the UI of an application so I'm going to create a constructor here for my Google home page object and then I'm going to add input parameter for this particular constructor as web driver you don't understand why I'm giving web driver as the input parameter in just a minute so I'm going to import this all right and then as I said there is a page factory in our selenium so which will initialize all the elements within the page so I'm going to use this constructor and I'm going to say this is the driver and this page so this will initialize my page oops looks like there are two publics here all right so now this constructor will initialize my objects in the page that's it guys it's so simple all right and then I'm going to write the test for this Google search so the first and foremost thing we need to do is let's create a web driver and I'm going to say Firefox driver all right so let's go ahead and add the references I'm sorry let's import the libraries all right and then let's create the object for the page so here it's Google home page object and let's say page is equal to new Google home page and we need to pass the driver here so the driver is nothing but our Firefox driver all right so I think now we got why I have initialized the constructor in the Google home page object right so we are all we are trying to say here is hey this is my web driver Firefox driver and I want to initialize the page with this particular web driver great so the page is already and now I want to search I want to type a text in the search text box and then I'm gonna click the button 
right and so this Google home page object will have all the controls that which I require to perform the operation so let's hit dot there as you can see here it brings me the button search and text search controls so the first thing I'm going to do is to search for the text selenium in my text search box so search for the text selenium so txt search oops I'm sorry page dot txt search dot send keys of selenium right then click the search button so page dot btn search dot click see as you can see here the the method is very clean and neat you don't have to every time write the web element element is equal to driver dot find element dot find element of by dot id or by dot name or by dot class name etc then you pause it and then the element will be there found and then you perform the operation like send keys of selenium etc so all those hazel things are just gone because you have separated the objects from your test now the last thing we need to do is to open the web page so here is going to be driver sorry so it's driver dot navigate dot two off so it is HTTP colon double slash www dot google dot com all right I'm gonna save this and let's try to run this test I think it should run oops I'm getting a Java exception here so if I see here oh yes yeah the problem is I have my Firefox installed in a different path it's not in the default C colon program files it is installed in a different drive so that's the problem so now I should set my system dot properties so the system dot oops okay so I have already written my code for this I'm just copy pasting this for saving my time so I'm gonna just paste it right here so as you can see here I'm just creating this Firefox driver within my main method since this is a static and the system dot set properties will always set within the method you cannot just call from outside of a method this way we cannot make this thing happen so I'm just going to save this as of now and if we run this test right now hopefully the Firefox should open and it should perform the intended operation which is there in our main method so let's see how it works okay seems like it has opened my browser and it's navigating it to Google and it is going to type selenium okay it typed and it has clicked the button search great so so simple so clean and neat and that's the power of page object so the next video we'll talk about the relationship that the page object maintains between each and every pages. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.